Hey everybody out there, and today for you guys we're going to be dis discussing how deck building and deck construction in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! have changed throughout the course of Yu-Gi-Oh! from 2002 to 2019. How has it changed? How has it evolved? Things of this nature we're going to be discussing in today's video. Now, me, I've played competitively in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! pretty much since 2003. Uh, believe it or not, went to regionals, went to locals, went to big events throughout the course of Yu-Gi-Oh's history. And I've always had my hand in the cookie jar, so to speak, in competitive Yu-Gi-Oh. So I definitely can explain to you guys and discuss this in detail of how it's evolved from my point of view. Now your point of view may be different, and that's perfectly fine, but I want to discuss this with you. So, keep in mind that if you've played through different eras in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, you may have seen a difference, but you may not know the extent of how this has happened. So, let's start at the beginning now. In the beginning, in the beginning, you actually had a very interesting concept. Uh, if you look, if you look at my History of Yu-Gi-Oh uh, series that I've done, I show you deck profiles from the first two years of the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, which we are working on the History of Yu-Gi-Oh series to do more episodes, so don't worry about that. But you will see in them that deck profiles are a combobulation of just good cards for those current formats. Now, ratios may be different. They will be tech cards, as there has always been throughout the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, you see in the early years that there's more of a player preference. Uh, someone may choose Seven Colored Fish over Legend the Mystical Genie because... They like fish. They like, they like genies over fishes, or they like fishes over genies because they have the same exact attack. So you see player preference and what they have accept, you know, access to. But at the same time, you see that the same cards popping up in every single deck because they are staple cards. Back in the early days of Yu-Gi-Oh, I would say up until we get to the Synchro era, towards not even Teladad, but as we head in from plant synchro into the Exceed era, staples drastically changed in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Up to the point in time in the beginning of Yu-Gi-Oh, you had what you called your Holy Trinity or staples. Your Holy Trinity was Monster Reborn, Regeki, and Pot of Greed. Those were your Holy Trinity, as well as Hoppy's Feather Duster. But um, th these interchanged with each other when Hoppy's Feather Duster and Regeki got banned later on, you had your Holy Trinity of Dark Hole, Pot of Greed, Heavy Storm. Um, this is what evolved. You had staple cards like this. Every deck ran these cards. In the early iterations of decks, you see things like hand control being more of a thing in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, per se. Uh, you see things like Confiscation, Delinquent Duo, Forceful Century. Your three main hand control cards that were spell cards that you could activate any time. Every deck ran it, especially if they were revolving around the concept of hand control. So, in the early part of Yu-Gi-Oh, up through GX, as we're heading from the old school, modern, original series of Yu-Gi-Oh to GX era, you see that it's pretty much a combobulation of just good cards, but with text put in for different players. There's no one defined, there's a defined best deck, for example, 2004 Chaos. Uh, Cyberstein OTK, uh, which is more in the GX era, but like Catapult Turtle, Magical Scientist stuff. You see best decks, good decks, but there's no one defined build to some degree. There's always choices of cards, a little bit different variations. I've never seen in back in those days as two decks being the exact same, actually, uh, even if they're similar builds. Um, as we head into the GX era, and at the end, as we get into the middle part of um, original Yu-Gi-Oh, you start to see the change though, where you see more of archetypes starting to evolve. As you guys know, the first couple archetypes, you have Toons, Amazons, GKs, and some other decks out there. But at the time, still, it's mainly types that you have. Zombie type, uh, Spellcaster type, Dragon type. You just have typings like this. Uh, light and Dark type for BLS support and Chaos Sorcerer and Emperor Dragon. So you saw typings and attributes being the main thing. Not so much archetypes, even though those were starting to become more of a thing. By the time that you get to the end of the GX era, this is a thing. 
archetypes are now officially a thing. You have defined archetypes. You have crystal beast. You have gadgets, like uh, gear, uh, ancient gears, heroes, more of a thing. If you look at all the original series players in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, did any one of them really have a defined archetype? Think about that for a second. Did they? Yeah, Yugi played Dark Magician, he played this and that, he played the King's Queen's Knight, yeah, he played this, gadgets, yeah. It's a combobulation of cards in their deck. By the time you get to the GX era, you see just to start to see more defined archetypes. Jaden plays heroes. Crowler plays, you know, Ancient Gears. Jesse plays Crystal Beast. You start to see that this is becoming more of a thing. Some people, not, not, not for every character in GX, but you start to see the same thing happening in real life Yu-Gi-Oh! Archetypes are starting to take over more. And by the time we get to 5Ds, archetypes are a thing. And they are becoming a staple mainstay in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, at this point in time, I would say, as we head into the 5Ds era, archetypes become meta. Up until that point in time, you had the monarchs that were doing good. You saw bits and pieces of archetypes doing decent here or there, like GKs, Six Sams from GX. They won, they topped events, they were good. But they weren't, you still had random, these rogue decks that were put together from different elements of things, different cards. They weren't an archetype based. By the time the 5Ds era ends, you see archetypes are now defined into the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. They are strictly a thing in game of Yu-Gi-Oh that is actually becoming more of a thing. This could start with X-Sabers, Infernity, um, the list goes on and on here, but you get my idea what I'm trying to say. But you still see your combobulation of good dot deck. Uh, things like Plant Synchro, for example. Dino Rabbit as we head into the Zexel era. Uh, there's a more of a thing that you start to see these archetype decks be a thing. Legendary Six Samurai is another good example there. GKs uh, with their new support that they got in the 5Ds era, Descendant and also Recruiter and Star Strike Blast. So you start to see these archetypes, they are topping more relatively, but you still see the good combobulation dot deck that the players in the community have created, so to speak. By the time Zexel hits, archetypes are now full-fledged. Archetypes in the Zexel era are what I did. Archetypes got the full-fledged and became a full thing where if you're not playing an archetype, you're not playing a good deck by the end of the Zexel era. At the beginning, you still saw these random decks doing good. Good examples are, uh, you start to see, you see Hat and Hat Pendulum format. You see also Dino Rabbit. You see Plant Synchro here and there in the early parts of uh, Zexel. So, for the most part, throughout this Zexel era, you see the dying of a deck that the community puts together. Things like Hat, Plant, Dino Rabbit. To the evolution of archetypes being more of a thing. There's a bunch I could list off here. Insectors, Windups, Fire Fist, Mermail. You get where I'm going with this, don't you? Uh, there's a list, a big list here, of just good archetype decks taking over. And by the time we get to the Pendulum era, we get to Arc 5, we see that archetypes are now the main standing of Yu-Gi-Oh. Throughout the Pendulum era, there was very few decks that topped that were not archetypes. Yes, you saw them here or there, but for the most part, it's archetype based now in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. And even to this day, archetypes are more of a thing in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. They're a staple thing in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. But there's a transition I've seen over the course of time, especially since, I would say, I saw it a little bit in hat format, and I've seen it a lot ever since Zodiac format. And what do you may, what are you speaking of as you wrap up this video here, Seto, or Modern Day Duelist? What are you speaking of about this new trend you see? It's a pretty simple trend, but I've followed trends in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh for a long time, and that trend is taking decks that are a combobulation of good decks, so a good engine. Now, we did have engines back in the day in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, we've had them throughout the you know, history of Yu-Gi-Oh, ever since we had the Light and Dark engine because we ran Light and Darks in our deck. 
so we could summon BLS and whatnot. But you see these engines being thrown in just about everything now, more so than ever. Uh, we saw when Zodiac format was around, Zodiac wasn't just played in a Zodiac deck, an archetype. The Zodiac archetype was played in other decks. We saw True Draco not just be played in True Draco, but be played in other decks. We've seen Dangers not just be played in Dangers, a Danger deck that's just Dangers on its own, but how many different variations of Dangers have you seen over the course of the last year or most? A lot. Danger Blue Eyes. Danger Orchest, Danger That, Danger This, Danger Cloudians, which will be meta one day. I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> but you get what I'm trying to say and trying to explain here is you're starting to see a trend where archetypes are being thrown, or good engines in an archetype are, that are generic are being thrown into other decks. They're not just seamlessly good cards like BLS, Chaos Ember, Dragon, Chaos Sorcerer, or just good cards that are in general, your Pot of Greed, Monster of Born, stuff of this nature, yes, that's still used, but you see them being thrown into every deck as an engine. Oh, I take this little thing out and I put this big engine in of this deck because it works, and because it's meta, and because it's good, and it works well and congenes well. Like, Danger Dark World works well together, doesn't it? It may not be meta, but it works well. So you see this, what I'm trying to say here, they take an engine out, an engine core, and they slap it onto another deck. And it works. But that's what the new trend it seems like. Just taking a deck core out and just slapping it in something else. Is that innovation? Eh, yeah, it is. Technically, by definition, it's innovation. But it doesn't fe feel as innovative as it used to be in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! to some degree. But it's still there. Innovation is still in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! I will not deny that it's dead. Um, but it seems just like taking one good idea, an engine, and just slapping it into everything, like I've seen with Dangers and Zodiac and other things over the course of the last two and a half years. But tell me, do you notice this trend as well, just taking engines and just slapping them in multiple decks out there as being the new trend in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh? Taking archetypal engines and slapping them into other decks. Tell me if you've noticed this, this trend as well. I hope you enjoy this video and walk down memory lane, but I just want to talk about the evolution of deck building and deck construction a little bit in this video. I hope you took something away from it, and until next time, take care, have fun dueling, good luck dueling, and I'll I'm see you guys nut. next I like time. Take buck. care, everybody. Wanna know what? I'm about to blow up. Caffeine in my cup, not lean in the blood. On the scene like a flood, and I've been through the mud. No, I can't get enough, like a challenge, make it tough. No, it's not a bluff, because I live for this stuff. And I take off the gloves just to break on my knucks. When I'm down on my luck, pick myself back up. Uh, heavy hitter, and you know I'm not a quitter. No beginner, gonna be a steady winner.